Well, thanks for interviewing, Dave. I really appreciate your time, uh, giving the listeners a little idea of what they can expect from uh, your workshop at the Denver Pomo Therapist Gathering, uh, April 27th. Um, why don't you give us a little idea uh, who you are, what brought you to this work, and uh, maybe um, just a few sound bites or bullet points about what um, attendees to the conference could look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, my name is Dave Matheson. Um, I'm a licensed professional counselor here in Colorado. Um, currently uh, finishing my fourth year in a PhD in counselor education and supervision. So gearing up to propose my dissertation here shortly. Um, you know, my journey to, to narrative I always talk about is somewhat of planned happenstance. Um, I was uh, an undergraduate student who was undeclared. Um, I walked into an intro to psychology class because I always was fascinated by psychology. And mm-hmm. Travis Heath was my professor. Um, oh. and so that started a, an amazing relationship and just, a, you know, he's a great mentor, a great friend. And so we've been close ever since. That was about 11 years ago. And so um, obviously graduated undergrad and went on to a master's in professional counseling. And the more and more I practiced, the more and more I found narrative to really just align with not just my way of being, but the ways that I conceptualize the world and the ways that I conceptualize mm-hmm. struggles and, and discourse and all that. And so um, I was definitely one of the students that thought I could never do this work. Um, this work is way too advanced, way too brilliant, way too out of reach for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I found that through sort of sticking it out and, and buckling down and taking some risks and trying to do some things that were perhaps a little bit out of the mm-hmm. stereotypical box, if you will, that they teach you in the academy, um, I just became more and more enthralled with just the work and seeing the change that happened in folks and just seeing how narrative conversations can steer sessions in such a meaningful direction. And it's often a direction that I think other therapies struggle to go in. Um, and so obviously through, you know, Travis and, you know, now with the Rocky Mountain Narrative Therapy Center that we've developed, um, really just taking it on full. And obviously in my work in the, in the doctoral program, a lot of it is centered around working with students. And I've found that students um, are very similar to how I experienced things when I was, you know, first starting out in the field of sort of being struck by awe. And and that's what I'm really excited about this, the workshop that we're going to be talking about is we're really trying to demystify, if you will, how to come into narrative ways or how to infuse narrative spirits of practice into not only just our everyday lives, but into sessions. And so I think what I'm the most excited about our talk is that we're going to have a chance to sort of unpack how one might arrive to bringing these ideas into practice. And I think it's similar to, to any type of thing that we immerse ourselves. And I'm, I'm a musician. So when I started playing drums at 12, I remember listening to music and being like, whoa, I could never play like that. I could never play that well. I could never be that on point. I could never have that type of meter. And then through immersion, right, through listening, through totally diving into drums, I started to see like, whoa, I I can do some of this stuff. Wow, the more I start doing some of this, it's opening up more doors to where I can do more things. And so really what we're hoping to do is to kind of unpack the lineage of how the three of us, Miley, Travis, and I sort of came into this sort of way of practicing um, with the hopes that as students come and listen to it, they can start to perhaps not be, and I think about awe is awe can be a debilitating sort of discourse. You know, if, Mm -hmm. if awe keeps me (laughs) from taking risks or from believing that perhaps I could infuse some of these methods of practice into my work, it sort of stifles our growth at the same time. And so what we're going to do is really trace the lineage of how, we came into narrative practice and I think what's great about the three of us is we're all so different in our developments. You know, we got Travis who's been practicing for years and years. And so I think the three of us hopefully will Mm -hmm. kind of shed some light on how to not let awe get in the way of experimenting and innovating and trying new things and, and stepping outside of the box, you know, as of course innovation being one of the core spirits of narrative practice we don't want to do the same thing every day. We're always looking for new ways, new questions, new counter stories. Mm. And through that, hopefully we can trace the ways in which some of these questions and different ways of narrative practice have found us in our own development to hopefully demystify that for students because it, you know, constantly, and I'm about to do a, 
a, a workshop tonight up at UNC here, and it's really just about how do counselors develop into narrative ways. And a big piece of it is looking at how discourses of perfection and discourses of, um, I mean, think about counselor development, all the research out there tells us all these things that counselors in training struggle with, right? For example, struggles with anxiety. Well, what are the things that anxiety doesn't know about counselors that are developing? Mm. (laughs) Might attending to some other things in development help support them developing more effectively in their practices? And so, Hopefully in this workshop, we're going to kind of trace this lineage, if you will, of how our immersion, our work at the Rocky Mountain Narrative Therapy Center is sort of transformed our own practice. You know, I find myself asking questions that Miley has asked in our apprenticeship meetings, right? I find myself asking questions that Travis may have asked or spirits of questions that they may have asked and just so how that immersion into each other's work can further our efficacy, further our ability to feel like we can do this and do this well in a way that fits for our own cultural locations, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think often students feel like there's a way, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. There's a singular way to do this work, to do it well. If I don't find that singular way, I'm doing this wrong. And I think narrative is unique in the sense that there isn't a way, right? I think that's the beauty of it. But there's a multitude of ways, right? There's a multitude of maps that can be sort of relied upon in this work. And so what we're going to do is really just go back through our own development across time and just talk about how the immersion into narrative practices, taking risks, um, consulting, you know, transcriptions. um, We sort of coined this term um, narrative reciprocal immersion, right? The idea that in supervision, supervisors get just as much out of that work as supervisees do and why aren't we shedding light upon how the practice of the students i might be working with are informing my own work in practice Mm -hmm. and so really our intent is to try to demystify and not let awe keep students from being vulnerable taking risks trying to go down paths that maybe no one's gone down before because the beauty in narrative is that when you go down paths that no one's been down before we're not sure what the destination can be And so we really want to just shed light on how we have come to integrate these things into our own work through really just being transparent and open through struggles that we've had um, when stuckness has found us um, in our own work and our own practice. What are the ways in which we recruit, you know, the spirits of other great narrative therapists to to help us through that? Um, So that's really the the direction we're hoping to go to for for the POMO conference for sure. I love that. And I think I well, I think what I love most is that I can hear in your voice that it's actually something that's really close to your heart um, that you're really excited about that you see showing up in other areas of your life, like yeah. music, and uh, that it can actually be something that I, uh, both lives inside of you. But it, it kind of like in my experience of our conversation right now, it really like gushes. Like, like, I get to do a workshop tonight and it's going to be awesome. It's, yeah, you know, it's like I know. One, I one of the it's... ways I hear what you're saying. And, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm also taken by the, uh, the language around, uh, lineage that you, you, uh, you see this as some sort of creative project or creative process, but at the same time, you know, that you're like, you're also grounded in a community of others that also loves this work like you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that you want to invite others in a demystified way to continue joining what it is that we're all trying to forward in our culture. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's, and it's such a privilege to be able to have the chance to do that. Like, I, I think, you know, honestly, the, the best part of this doctoral program has been the chance to just work with students, you know, to watch them, go into the room for the first time to watch them, you know, speak about some of the risks they want to take, um, whether that's, you know, a new question they're thinking about or some unique outcome they want to explore and then watching them go in and do that. Mm -hmm. And then they come out feeling more aligned with who they want to be in the room. And I think it's just, it's a magical thing. And and I hope that, you know, this, the lineage piece is uh, I'm really fascinated by because, you know, of all, you know, you read David Epstein's transcripts, you read Kay Ingham, I mean, you name all these incredible therapists, you read their work, and you immerse yourself in their line, and then you start finding how their spirits of practice start coming through your own mm-hmm. lens of practice. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and I think that's the, the biggest thing in, in demystifying how one comes into these ways of practice is to 
showcase how and and to make it really tangible we think often you know postmodern and these things can feel very um i don't know if aloof is the right word but very distant for students there's not a whole lot to latch on to right and i think as you're developing as a clinician we're looking for something to kind of have a foothold with right we're looking for something to kind of ground us in the direction we're going and how we're wanting to do this work And often that sense of awe I have found sort of is counter to that. It's like, well, that's incredible, but I could never do that work. Well, what what would it be like if I thought that you could do that work? (laughs) What would it be like to hear that I've seen you do some of that work? And how might that open up more opportunities as we develop into this role as a counselor? And so um, I really hope that through the workshop, you know, regardless of where you know, attendees might be in their development, whether they're, you know, about ready to go into graduate school or whether they're, you know, professionals already in the community, this idea that we never arrive, we're, mm-hmm. we're never done. We mm-hmm. don't stop growing. We don't stop improving. Um, and how to showcase means from which we can continue to enhance how we do this work and why it's magical if we can immerse ourselves in that in the ways that I think a lot of students want to, but don't really know how perhaps, mm-hmm. or don't know, they don't have the means or I'm not sure, I'm not sure what mm-hmm. that is. I think um, that it's similar to drums. You know, if I sat there and said, well, you can never play like that. Well, it doesn't really invite me into trying anymore. Right. Yeah. It's sort of like, yep, yeah. that sounds great, but I'm nowhere near that gifted. Right. And sort of, I think it cancels out a lot of opportunity for students. So mm-hmm. I'm really optimistic mm-hmm. that I think through the three of us and our own journeys and our own stories and our own work and apprenticing can shed light on how, we cannot let awe <laughs> remove the spirits of innovation or remove our ability to to innovate mm-hmm. as as clinicians. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, and that that word you used, invite, was uh, one that uh, Miley used as well. Is this like gr- like that <laughs> carry the 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 heart of what you you are hoping to do? Is it sounds like invite students into. Uh, the lineage invites students into this work. And I know my own experience having gone to your engaging supervision workshop last uh, spring, summer in May um, yeah. was, uh, was a, a really great foray for me into uh, as, as a graduate student ending my tenure there and, and launching into this professional world, a really a great invitation into um, the transcript work specifically uh, that yeah. you did. And I, I wonder, um, is, uh, sort of my last question, uh, for our interview is the workshop that you'll be doing with Travis and Miley, something of a, uh, continuation of this engaging supervision work? Yeah, I would say that there's a, to deny that that engaged work isn't a part of sort of this process. I think he's just, it, it's a major part of it. Right. And mm-hmm. I think what we're hoping to do is to invite ways in which, you know, transcripts, of course, like if there's one thing that's developed my skills and my ability to do great work, it's through analyzing what I do. Mm. <laughs> um, Scott Miller, you know, talks about deliberate practice, this right, idea right. that just because we've been walking for 30 years doesn't mean that we're getting better at it. Mm. And I think mm-hmm. that's the danger with some clinicians. Like, well, I've been practicing for 40 years. Well, what are you intentionally doing to enhance what you do? Right. Um, and so I would say that the engaged supervision and all that work is a huge piece of how we're going to trace this lineage. But I think what we're hoping to do is to kind of expand the horizon a little bit and to offer some other opportunities for folks that maybe don't have access to recording to do transcripts or perhaps are new to narrative and aren't practicing yet. And so we're really hoping to provide some other opportunities and showcase how different types of immersion, similar to engaged practices, can really enhance our work. Um, So I would say it's a... It's definitely a, I don't know what the right term would be for it. It's definitely a continuation of that engaged supervision workshop. But this one is, I'm hoping to gear towards a more broad audience, you know, mm-hmm. and that we can actually invite folks from all sorts of different ways or different practices or different locations, different, I mean, who knows, psychology, who, who knows might be around that, that there's opportunities to immerse fully in lots of ways. And transcripts, one huge piece of that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um so we're, I think we're hoping to broaden it just a touch. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. I hear it's a, it's, it's really sort of an expansive thing that, uh, that is, uh, um, yeah, percolating for you all. And I'm really glad mm. that as a, as a center as Rocky mountain narrative therapy center, you're all, 
uh, taking this up and, uh, and carrying it forward into the world. So, um, I did want to mention or give you maybe a chance to mention that, uh, Rocky Mountain Narrative Therapy Center has, um, both, uh, a, a more established web presence, uh, right. If maybe yes. you could like uh, yes. point us toward that URL and we'll, um, we'll put it in the YouTube show notes, um, below. And, uh, and also you have, um, some partnership with, uh, the Calgary community coming up too, right? Correct. Yeah. We actually have a, a two day workshop that's going to be happening, um, the first, uh, Friday and Saturday of May. Um, we have Tom Carlson and Sonny and some amazing international folks from the Calgary, uh, narrative center coming down to do a workshop with us. And so that's going to be a full two day, um, another sort of immersion into the spirits of narrative practice, but it's always a pleasure to just bring international folks in and just continue to create that collaboration amongst the narrative folks, which I think is something that you all have done incredibly well just with the Denver Pomo. Um, and so that'll be happening. And yeah, our website is up. It's definitely still a work in progress. We are sort of learning how to become web editors <laughs> as well as the other things that we are doing. Uh, but the website is just RMNTC dot weebly dot com um it's got all of our workshops on there consultation services um, apprenticeship opportunities um, of course we have all the pomo stuff up there as well um, and so we're really trying to uh sort of start spreading our our reach a little bit um as far as the services that we can offer we're really um open to doing all sorts of things you know we have one-time transcription services where you know, you can have members of our center go through a transcript with you and kind of add our own questions within a transcript. Um, we have full on six month or year long apprenticeships as well. And so we're hoping that website will um, expand that reach for us in the ways that we're hoping to. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, uh, we'll put the um, URL that you just mentioned again in the um, show notes and uh yeah, be spreading the good word. Well, appreciate it. Yeah, and and appreciate your time. Thanks for uh, thanks for chatting with us today. And uh, oh. yeah, we will look forward to seeing you in uh, April twenty seventh. Have fun at your workshop tonight. I will. Yeah, thanks so much for all you do, Anthony. Really appreciate you all. Yeah, yeah. Labor of love. Having fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, have a good one, Dave. All right, you too, brother. Bye bye.